Hello and welcome back to another instructional video from Van Walt. Today we're going to have a look at low flow sampling with the peristaltic pump and we're going to also have a look at some of the best practices on site. First of all I want to show you some of the goodies available from us for low flow sampling. Let's start with the peristaltic pump and the pump comes with a charger and with an adapter for a cigarette lighter. Also we have available an additional battery pack and we have tubing available silicon tubing we have two types of this smaller and larger what I'm holding here is the smaller tubing this is 4 by 8 millimeter and this in conjunction with our pump will lift groundwater from nine and a half meters and the correlating PE sampling tube as well and this is 4 by 6 millimeters. Also we have some filters, 0.45 micron filters and this is, these are 20 centimeter square area and if you're sampling particularly dirty water we have the same micron but a much larger 350 square meter area. As you can see in the back there we have the ubiquitous YSI with flow cell and calibration fluids. Scrolling along, an oil interface meter that comes with a tape guard. Insert this into the well and that will stop your tape from cutting on sharp surfaces. And then we have our PID, the Tiger PID and the little Tetra 3 LEL unit and both those units come with CalGas and their respective equipment. So now what we're going to do is set some of this equipment up and have a look at how we would use our peristaltic pump in a low flow sampling situation. Okay so let's get set up for a sampling session. I have my test tank in the corner here and I already have some sample tube installed and the next thing we're going to do before we continue our setup is to turn on the YSI unit and I'm doing that now because the dissolved oxygen probe requires time to warm up and we will set up the flow cell and inside the flow cell you'll find some connectors Today I'm going to use the smaller ones. Okay, I'm going to unscrew the top of the flow cell. Just put that down for a moment. Grab the Y side probe. fit this over screw it up right that's ready to go let's put that back in now what I'm going to do is have a look at my discharge tube here I've cut myself a small piece of silicon tube I'm going to fit that over here okay and now a little bit of PE tube put this down and there we go that part's ready there let's now have a look at how to install the silicon tube into the pump. I've cut myself enough tubing here to go round the pump and connect to the flow cell. And turn the pump on, loosen up the tube clamp. I 
Okay. And then I'm going to feed this through. And stop. Good. Clamped up nice and tight. Okay, now this por portion of the tube can go into the bottom of the flow cell. You can't see what I'm doing. On you get. There we go. And now all I need to do is connect up my sample tube. And there we are, the pump's connected, we're drawing from the sample tube, through the pump, into the flow cell, and out again. And for my purposes, we're just going out into the sink. Okay, so we're ready to start the pump. What I'm going to do is start it in memory mode. We've already made a video of how to do this, but I'll just go through it again. I'm going to hold my memory button down, this is memory A here and I'm going to press the on button and I'm going to wait for at least three seconds okay so I'm going to do that hold that down on one two three four okay we're now in memory mode and now I can dial the pump up and this is going to allow us to pause the pump at any time and restart it at the revolution and direction that we want it in so we're now pumping from our well and we now have some flow and what we want to do, we're looking for about 200 ml a minute for low flow sampling, plus or minus and of course we'll need to be monitoring the drawdown in the well with our dip meter so let's have a look at the moment Okay, that's about 150 mil in 30 seconds, so I'm just going to dial the pump down a little bit. Let's try that again. That's pretty good, that looks like it's about 100 mil every 30 seconds, about 200 mil a minute. So now what we're going to do is wait for our YSI to stabilize and once we've reached stability we're going to let the pump cycle three more times before we can take a sample. So three cycles, approximately three minutes, that's 600 mil. And that's the volume of the pump equipment itself, the tubing, the flow cell. So when we're ready to sample we're going to disconnect the tube from the flow cell we're always sampling before the flow cell so we're going to do that your lab will give you your, the correct sample bottle so I'm just going to use this little beaker for now so now we're going to use the memory function on the pump we can turn this off now and that allows us to disconnect without making a mess and now in order to restart the pump at that memory hold memory button down press the on button and let go and there we go and now what we need to do is hold this tube as close to the sample water as we can and we need to do this to avoid aerating the sample this is particularly important when sampling for VOCs And the other thing we're going to do is brim the bottle. We don't want to have any air in the bottle.
and once we've done that again we can stop the pump and now if we want to we can attach our filter I have a small disc filter here I've already put a small length of tubing on the exit side there is you can't see it, it's too shiny in here, but there is an in and an out so be aware of that and we've got a little tube clamp here as well so now we can pop this on and the clamp goes on and the reason why the clamp goes on is this pump is capable of producing a good amount of pressure and if this filter gets clogged we could end up forcing this hose off and making a mess. So this clamp is going to go on. And now we're ready to take a filtered sample. And again, we can start the pump in memory mode. And we can do the same again.